Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. We got a bunch of big stories today. I don't want to waste too much of your time before we get into it. Uh, we do have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. To enter that, just go down to the pinned comment or in the description. That being said, let's get right into this news. There's so much to go over. Uh, starting with the fact that Nintendo has been under these public accusations for some time. And Doug Bowser made a public statement last week uh, and, and actually sent a letter out to some employees. But he now he's had an internal meeting over these public accusations, which I find quite interesting because apparently this meeting wasn't actually with the very people accusing Nintendo. So that's a little strange. Uh, but this comes from Axios' Stefan Totillo, and he claims that he spoke to two different sources about the situation, and both sources claimed that Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser discussed the accusations during a town hall meeting within Nintendo. These meetings are attended by full-time employees, so contractors weren't actually there to speak up on the matter. According to the inside source, Mr. Bowser stated that Nintendo values its associates, the company's word for contractors, and the accusations have been lobbed are being taken very seriously. That's obviously exactly what you want to hear from Mr. Bowser, so hopefully Nintendo will take action moving forward to remedy the situation. I also would have liked to see that he meets... Uh, like, can you meet with the contractors? Is there a reason Doug Bowser is not meeting with them directly? I, that's what I want to see. Like, address the situation head on, meet with them, do a town hall meeting with the contractors, let them lobby the complaints to you directly, and then address them. I, I think that's really what needs to happen here. Uh, but what are you going to do? He's, he's, he's meeting just with the full-timers for now, which kind of... Again, feels a little suspicious, but Doug Bowser, do what you got to do, man. You know, you are in control, so good luck with that. Uh, next up, uh, there's been reports. You guys have probably seen several videos over the last few days that uh, Twilight Princess HD might not be coming to Nintendo Switch after all uh, because it's something that Tantalus, the CEO of Tantalus, said. Uh, so first, let's get into a neat little fact. It took them about one and a half years uh, to get Skyward HD's Skyward Sword HD's controls right. This comes from Tantalus' CEO as well, so that's why Skyward Sword HD took a little bit because they were trying to get the controls working right, uh, you know, with these modern controls and all that. Um, but uh, he also said the following: the so CEO Tom Crago opened up about the hard work that went into creating Skyward Sword HD's control schemes, uh, and this is just for the Skyward Sword part. It says. It's the hardest thing because we're working away at this, and we are all imagining is Anuma-san with the Joy-Con in his hands, assessing, critiquing whether it feels okay. It's hard to understate the significance of Skyward Sword from a gameplay standpoint. I mean, here's this controller that we've never seen on the Wii, and here's a game about a freaking sword while you're waving this controller around that kind of was the game. A great majority of people loved it, a few people didn't. What we're trying to do is replicate the joy, the freedom, and the experience on a totally different piece of hardware. We felt that we had the potential to be criticized for it, but we also felt here is a huge opportunity, especially for people who maybe found it challenging or a little bit exhausting waving the Wii remote around to give them a different opportunity. And of course, it had to work for those Switch Lite users. Having it work button only, joystick only, was probably the biggest challenge for us. And it's not that there's 50 engineers sitting in a room writing lines of code to figure it out. It's more just, okay, let's take a step back. Let's really think about what we're trying to achieve here from a gameplay and feel standpoint. Keep on making suggestions, working back and forth until we nail it. Uh, and then, this is the part that, that's got people talking. They talked about Twilight Princess HD coming to Switch. And he said, no. And look, we'd obviously love to do that, bring Twilight Princess HD to Switch. But that hasn't been a priority for Nintendo. Or, this is the big part, at least they have not had conversations with us or conversations that we have been in. So Nintendo has not contacted them at all about porting Twilight Princess HD to Switch. Now, this might seem like a silver bullet or red bullet, whatever you want to call it, to shoot a massive hole in all the Twilight Princess HD rumors coming to Switch. Um, however, I was a bit skeptical about this and didn't want to put a video up because I'm not sure that Tantalus not being talked to about the port matters. Uh, I, I really didn't want to know, so I kind of reached out on Twitter, and I take Jeff Grubb. Uh, Jeff Grubb is an industry insider. He's been talking about Twilight Princess HD coming to Switch for a long time. Uh, he is a well-known and well-established uh, video game journalist, and he responded to my tweet, and he said, Nintendo owns the source code 
and would not need Tantalus to port its work of just one of the two games in the pack. So we're talking about the pack of Twilight Princess HD and the Wing Waker HD. So what he's saying is if Nintendo wanted to do it themselves or they tasked another studio, Tantalus wouldn't even need to be contacted. So he's basically saying, hey, this just means Tantalus didn't do it. Okay. So take that for what it is. That's why we didn't make a big deal out of it. But I wanted to bring it up because I wanted to clear some of the confusion on that. So no, the Twilight Princess HD rumors aren't necessarily false right now. It's just a matter of, hey, who did port it? Is it Grezzo? Grezzo does a lot of ports for Nintendo. So you never know. All right, next up, we have some strange news with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So the, collection, uh, ed the collector's edition... We all know uh, at this point in Europe, for some reason, the collector's edition items are going to arrive to people this fall, even though you can buy the collector's edition now. That's a weird story. Going to kind of leave that one alone because this is a weird one that actually appeared on 4chan. And normally we don't cover stuff on 4chan, but this has gotten a lot of traction. And I think it's just the way that this works because it heavily hints that there's actually an upcoming Nintendo Direct. Uh, so call this a rumor. Uh, but this comes right off 4chan. Here's the direct words. I work at a company that's shipping contractors for Nintendo or whatever it is. I don't know the extent of their relations, but my manager, who I hooked on to the first Xenoblade, told me that the game store uh, a few blocks from us in Mexico, so this is someone who's in Mexico, uh, would be getting the copies of the game two weeks early. So uh, a, a store in Mexico will have it, you know, he says technically 15 days early, but same thing. And that company, which is not us directly, would be told how many copies they are expected to be distributing to different places after the next news presentation, as that was when special edition pre-orders would be open, because they're not open right now in Mexico. So I guess if you are waiting around for the special edition, it's going to be after their next direct, and if you are also in Mexico, you might be able to get the game early. So what he's basically saying here is, hey, look, pre-orders for the special edition in Mexico are not going to open up until after the next news presentation. And guess what? The game comes out in July. So sometime between now and Xenoblade Chronicles coming out, there's going to be a news presentation. What's a news presentation? That's a Nintendo Direct. Again, this is why it's so weird. It's such a weird way to hear that a Nintendo Direct is coming. This isn't like telling us all the games that are going to be in our Direct. This isn't like giving us a date. This is just kind of like, hey, this is this weird out there thing I know about happening with like these copies of Xenoblade 3 in Mexico. And by the way, uh, you can't even order one of them until after the news presentation, which hasn't even been announced. So I think that's kind of cool. And I think that's why it's getting a little bit of credence from some people. We still call it a Nintendo Direct rumor. But uh, hey, it's kind of neat to see something out there that isn't from the typical places. All right. Next up, PlayStation. Oh, boy. PlayStation did a huge announcement. I'm going to read this right off their blog uh, because the title of the blog post they put up today says, All new PlayStation Plus game lineup. So remember, they're doing this PlayStation Plus thing. They've added a premium. They're trying to compete with Game Pass uh, without putting brand new games on the platform, but they're trying to add some quality ones. So it says, All new PlayStation Plus game lineup includes Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Demon Souls, Ghost of Shishima, Director's Cut, NBA 2K22, and more join the service. Um, so it says, it's almost here. Uh, our new PlayStation Plus service is launching soon, and we're pleased to share with you an early look at some games that will be included during the launch time frame. As we announced in March, there will be three benefit plans to choose from, all with exciting games to play. Here's a look at the games to come. Please note the titles may vary in the local market. And they put out a video um, talking about those very same titles. So monthly games, PlayStation Plus Essential, Extra, and Premium slash Deluxe Plans. In any PlayStation Plus plan you can choose, you'll get the same benefits that are currently available today for PlayStation Plus members. We have yet to announce the monthly games for June, but stay tuned to the PlayStation blog. So they haven't announced the ones for next month yet. Um, PS4 and PS5 game catalog. So we're focused on adding high quality titles to the PlayStation Plus service for players to enjoy. I'm pleased to share a selection of the content that will be available for PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium slash Deluxe plans. PlayStation.com will be updated with the game list when launches in your region. So these are the games they're including at launch uh, for, that, for that platform. Um, and here's PlayStation Studio games. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of stuff from PlayStation 4. Uh, a lot of the PlayStation 4 exclusives are here, almost all of them. Uh, and then uh, here are the ones that have PS4 or PS5 from third-party partners. Uh, so there you go there. Uh, some very interesting choices in there as well. And if you haven't played that Guardians of the Galaxy game, you really should from Square Enix. That's a really good game. All right. Uh, then it says Classic Game Catalog. 
Uh, so this is for the PlayStation Plus Premium and Deluxe. Plan. PlayStation Plus Premium Deluxe members will have a select selection of popular classic games to play with some titles that will show improved frame rates and higher quality resolution compared to their original launch versions. For select original PlayStation and PSP classic games, members will also enjoy a new user interface with menus that allow you to save your game at any time. So save states. Nintendo has this going on their games as well. Or even rewind the game if you want to do over. This is a, a PlayStation feature, the whole rewind feature. Also, players who have previously purchased the digital version of select games from the original PlayStation and PSP generation will not have to make a separate person or sign up for PlayStation Plus to play these titles on PS4 or PS5. When these titles are released uh, for PS4 and PS5, players can head to PlayStation Store and download a version for the console at no extra cost. If you already have these games and they're already registered to your PlayStation account, this is one benefit of a universal account, you can just download these games. You won't need to get the subscription, so that's really cool. So these games will get added and then you'll be able to download them. Additionally, some remastered classics from previous console generations will be added to the PlayStation Plus Premium slash Deluxe plan. Below is an early look at selection of games that will be available. And then there's your look at the games. Got PlayStation Studios, third-party partners, um, and all that. So that looks really, really good. Uh, now, PlayStation 3 games are only going to be available via streaming like they are already. Uh, the new PlayStation Plus will offer the PS3 games to stream uh, and play on PS4, PS5, and PC. These are original non-remastered versions, so just the original base games. Uh, here's an early look at the selection for those. And if you're wondering, that's because PS3 is on a very different uh, type of architecture, so that's why they're just streaming these games instead of actually having them natively. Doesn't mean they don't deserve native ports, but uh, that's, that's what you get here from Sony. Um, so they got time limited game trials as well. Uh, the time limited game trial benefit will enable you to try to select games before you buy. Uh, this is available for the premium and deluxe plan. After downloading a trial of the full game, you can play it for two hours for most games. Uh, EA has a similar process for that. They, the EA, uh, when, when you subscribe to their thing, uh, you, you get like a two hour trial, uh, but it is the full game. Uh, it's a great way to play games before you decide to buy, and any trophies and games they did uh, will carry over because it's probably just the full game with a timer on it. PlayStation Studios, uh, they're going to have Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, Horizon Forbidden West. Third-party partners will include Cyberpunk 2077, Farming Simulator 22, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and WWE 2K 2022. So very small list there. Uh, they, they promise to add new games regularly. Games available for PlayStation Plus Games Catalog will continue to refresh and evolve over time, so there's always something new to play. PlayStation Plus Essential as a monthly refresh will occur on the first Tuesday of the month for every PlayStation Plus Essential plan and both higher tiers, with the new PS4 and PS5 games added to the service, same as what PlayStation Plus members get today. For the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium slash Deluxe tier, an additional monthly refresh will occur in the middle of each month with new games across the PlayStation Plus uh, Extra and Premium Deluxe plans. Number of games refresh will vary per month. So basically, you get two game drops instead of one. All right, launch is just a week away, starting on May 24th, followed by June 2nd in Japan, North and South America on June 13th, and finally Europe. So Asia is May 24th, Japan's June 2nd, North and South America. So here is June 13th, uh, same for Australia, and uh, uh, what is it, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand are June 23rd. So they're doing like a, a, a slow rollout. So yeah, this is obviously some nice finer details on stuff they've already talked about in the past. Uh, good for them. I, I don't really know what to say. I, I I think this is a decent service. Uh, it's still not... I mean, until you're releasing your brand new games on it, it's not Game Pass. Uh, but it's something. You guys let me know what you think about this on the console. It's definitely better than what Nintendo's got going on. I can at least tell you that. Next up is the Fall Guys news. There was a massive Fall Guys event today. Um, we're just going to recap that event for you guys. We did live streaming earlier. So Fall Guys is going to be free to play. According to the big announcement live stream that premiered today, as of June 21st, 2022, Fall Guys Season 1 will be free on all consoles for all players. That includes Switch and Xbox. Anyone who already purchased the game will be entitled to a free legacy pack, which includes three costumes, Veggie Dog, Regal, and Feisty dwarf and a free premium pass 100 tiers in the past so uh yeah that is um a, a new thing they're adding to the game you won't be able to spend crowns in the store anymore but instead uh the team are bo uh, bolstering the crown ranks with new stuff however kudos is staying and all players will be able to earn it and spend it in the shop you can also exchange your crowns for kudos the game will also been reconfirmed for a switch release alongside epic game store xbox and playstation 5 also on June 21st, uh, there will be cross-platform multiplayer and cross-progression. Uh, the details for the Switch version are as follows. Handheld is 30 FPS and 720p. Docked is 30 FPS and 1080p. And you can use both Joy-Con 
and the Pro Controller. Uh, PS4 has a new version of Fall Guys available to download right now, which players will have to grab if they want to keep playing. So they're getting rid of the old client, with launching the new client. All your stuff will, cross, will, will, uh, will be brought over. The PS5 and Xbox Series X are aiming for 60 FPS and 4K. Xbox Series S is 60 FPS and 2K. Uh, Xbox One is going to be 30 FPS. Uh, going up to 60 FPS on the Xbox One X. If you want to get in on the free-to-play game ahead of time on June 21st, you can pre-register on the Fall Guys website, which we will have linked below, uh, which will grant you access to exclusive perks like costumes, emotes, nameplates, depending on how many people sign up. Also, this is really cool. There's a um, new massive update, which will include new modes, sports, and new costumes and more. Uh, but we won't hear more about it until it's closer to release the summer. But they did give us a tease of some stuff, including um, a three-piece dragon, and Golden Gladiator, as well as Blast Balls, and a new sport to play with pals. Also, some new costumes coming up from new IPs. Ezio, Pusheen, three Godzilla costumes, Godzilla, Mothra, and Mecha Godzilla, and new IP levels, which they can't talk about yet. Um, could be Nintendo levels, you never know. Uh, also, and this is the big thing they, they announced at the end, they're adding a level creator mode, so you'll be able to make your own stages, uh, but they listed as under construction and uh, is pretty far off still. So it's something they're working on now. They did tease it. Looks really cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I, I thought this was a, an amazing uh, presentation overall. I thought they did a really, really good job, and that is your Fall Guys recap. Next up, we are ending with some Silent Hill rumors. These rumors are flowing. We got Video Game Chronicles involved. We got Jeff Grubb. We got Nate the Hate involved in all this. So I'm reading this off Video Game Chronicles. It says, Konami Silent Hill plans could include a remake, a full sequel, and episodic stories. That's a lot of Silent Hill when we have zero Silent Hill right now. Uh, the Bloober team is one developer understood to be working on a revival of the horror franchise. This is big news since Konami usually doesn't do much of anything these days. Um, multiple Silent Hill projects are currently in development at studios around the world, sources have told Video Game Chronicles, and could include a remake, a full sequel, and a story-focused episodic series. Last week, a collection of leaked concept, Im concept images appeared to confirm the new Silent Hill is or was in development, and I can't show you those images because they've been copyright striking. That's one re reason why we are pretty firm on these things being real. Uh, this followed a Video Game Chronicles story from last February in which we reported that Konami was planning to revive the long dormant horror game series. Now details are emerging on what some of these projects could look like. As first mentioned by influencer Nate the Hate and journalist Jeff Grubb, one of the in-development titles could be a remake of the fan favorite 2001 installment Silent Hill 2. This matches with what Video Game Chronicles has heard from our own sources. It's claimed that the remake will feature reworked AI, animations, puzzles, and several new endings, and potentially released as a timed exclusive on PlayStation consoles. The Medium Studio has also been linked to Silent Hill franchise constantly over the past 18 months. Last year, the Polish developer announced a strategic cooperation agreement with Konami, months after Bloober's CEO claimed it was working on an existing horror IP from a very famous gaming publisher. Silent Hill's composer, Akira Yamoka, even worked on Bloober's 2021 title, The Medium, and teased his next game project by stating it was the one you've been hoping to hear about. Bloober team did not immediately respond for comment. So first on Nate the Hate, it has a tweet here. Uh, it says the Bloober team's working on Silent Hill 2 Remake, rework puzzles, new endings, time, uh, PlayStation console exclusive, multiple Silent Hill projects in development, including a new mainline entry and side stories. Not confirmed. He's just sharing what he's heard. Then Jeff Gubb responds to him and says, this is the stuff I've heard, and it comes from multiple different sources. Not all of my sources are primary, but everything is mostly lining up to me. The biggest indicator is the stuff I've seen lines up with Konami doing a big reveal at E3 last year before it pulled out of E3. Uh, but as VGC and Insiders have previously reported, we understand Konami has been actively talking to several developers about reviving the Silent Hill IP across multiple games. One of those projects is intended to be a smaller episodic series of short stories, we were told. Sources have previously indicated that Until Dawn Studios Supermassive had once been involved in talks for such a project, which eventually evolved into its dark picture games. One new game two people independently gave Video Game Chronicles was... Um, Anna Piranha Interactive, the acclaimed publisher behind games such as Sayonara Wild Hearts, Outer Wilds, and Telling Lies, which they said could involve in the Stories project. However, they said many studios have been involved in pitches for Silent Hill, and it's possible Anna Piranha was simply involved in one of those discussions rather than 
having the project greenlit. Video Game Chronicles has contacted them for comment on this story. There is obviously no comment at this point. Uh, finally, Video Game Chronicles has been told that Konami is planning to release a new mainline entry in the Silent Hill series. It's not clear who is leaving the game, but Video Game Chronicles reported last year that a Japanese studio was working on a Silent Hill project. The image leaked last week are understood to be related to a PT-style teaser game codename sakura which is intended to be released as a free digital title to build anticipation for the larger projects video game chronicles first reported on konami's plans to ramp up its premium game development last year with new installments and remakes for its biggest franchises including metal gear and castlevania so i'll link to the article down below if you want to uh, dive deeper into it or or you know they, they linked a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of separate reports a whole bunch of separate sources if you want to dig deeper into all of this obviously video game chronicles is throwing their weight of their sources behind this along with obviously jeff grubb and uh, nate the hate so take that for what you will this is obviously a really really big deal to see silent hill potentially come back and uh yeah i i want to see it happen more horror games the better to me that being said whew, we made it i had to read a lot today I usually don't have to read that much for a Prime News, but there was just too many quotes, too much information. Enjoy it. I'll catch you guys tonight. We'll be live streaming. Thank you for tuning in to Prime News. <laughs>